Here we talk about the basics of ECU tuning. If you wish to understand a bit more about ECU tuning or actually get to start tuning, this one is just for you. We we'll talk about different platforms like HTS. Yes, talk about the details that I've seen that's not been talked about. Talk about the equipments and of course some details of the Chrome and every single stuff that we can share. And of course, if you've been tuning, this video is already something that you already know. But for others that's willing to learn more or get started in tuning, this is going to be perfect. Here we talk about the details, including using Hyundai the S300, all the stuff that you can do. And of course, the importance of setting the ignition timing. Yes, the cause and effect of what it does, what it doesn't do, what you can achieve and not achieve on that. So, yep, you guessed it. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. Before we start, here's our new page. I had to make a new one because my personal Facebook got hacked, so I lost control of the old page. Here, as you can see, we got a price list for head porting, engine build labor, time degree, even intake porting, and easy tuning. So, yep, we've been tuning for a while now. So, here we post good stuff there, like here on the intake. This actually led to a good discussion on the comment section, which led to an intake test on the dyno with the stock airbox versus that. So also, if you don't have Facebook, we got the Instagram here. Yes, I use it exclusively for SRD Motorsports. As you can see, I constantly post good stuff there too. So you can contact me from either platform. Link will be in the description below. And of course, for the short form content, we got our TikTok. We got a few guys from South Africa, from everywhere. You get to talk to there. There's a platform that you can check too. Of course, it's gonna be in the description. So let's get started. Of course, you gotta your computer box is already re-chipped to be able to run a chip or chip to run a Hyundai the S three hundred and the chip burner. I use modes chip burner the burn two, which is still good, but unfortunately they closed down, so can't get replacement. I broke my ostrich, so I had to get the Cobra RTP. You can check on Facebook for details for Cobra and the Snake board, so they're all available. So let's start with Chrome here. All right, the legendary Chrome. Okay, now here, let's say we have a, a, an EG hatchback with a SOC D16. So we're gonna start with the P28 D16 here. Yep, as you can see here, on, this is the map. Check here, the, the low, this is the idle section area. Here, this is the high cam fuel map. And this is the low cam ignition map. And you can see this is the idle section. This is all the stuff that you know you get to drive on there. There's a high cam map. So this is we use it when you're in VTEC. This is where you touch it. And here's the rev limit on the options and the target idle. I usually put 950 to 1000 there and the VTEC engagement here. All right. You gotta disable most of this or all of it actually to minimize the throwing a cell code. All right. And this is the target idle and the IACV control, you can adjust it for it, how many percent you need addition or sub subtraction if you're having idle problems. This would definitely help. But ideally, zero is okay. But if you're running a different kind of injectors, like for example, a 440cc DSM injectors, you gotta change this part here. So ideally, when you start, if you're starting to tune or starting tuning, a stock engine with the stock injectors is a lot better for less complications. And here you check all the plugins there yep all right here start on the back of the ignition map oh wait low cam here this one the idle section here so we'll talk more about that a little later but for now let's move to hts yes honda tuning suite all right so let's say we have the same eg hatch back with the d16 so we open up a map here you got obd1 now you go, yeah, we leave that untouched. And here we look for the DCN Z6. Oh, there you go. Yep. Okay, here you can see it's much similar. Here's the low cam fuel. There's the non VTEC section map. And then the high cam. And here, this is the high cam ignition. This is for when in VTEC, this is what you check. And this is the low cam. 
this is the idle section right here so you gotta check on that make sure it's all 16 so we're gonna work on that later but here also you can check on for the parameters where is it the idle settings here you can adjust the idle and the good thing with this compared to chrome it has an icv control with ac on and of course ac off so you can adjust how many percent you need to activate it here's the vt engagement if you need to adjust that too and the rev limit so this is pretty good pretty decent so much the same as chrome we have all that flexibility so yep so going back to the ignition map on the low cam so here's the idle sections here so before we get to home data i think the favor i got have you guys like the video because the more like the video you get the more activity it shows the algorithm and gets spread out the wider audience so the, it helps the channel big time so i really appreciate it guys thanks for the favor hit the like button okay if you haven't you gotta subscribe this way you can binge watch on all the other videos on your own free time because whenever you log into youtube you can always check our channel so on your free time so there's no rush no pressure you just subscribe you can check it out whenever you want and of course for the hardcore we got ultra hardcore videos on the section on the member section you can like this and then tuning of course because we're making this ecu tuning video we're gonna have an extensive ecu tuning video there all right yeah okay now here on han data yep so we have an eg hatchback with the d16 so let's open up a new calibration let's look for it where is it where is it wait wait oh there is p28 all right so it's much the same as you notice from from chrome hds and this they're all similar this is the idle section of the low cam map of the ignition then the high cam of the ignition still and here in the fuel low cam and high cam so yep so now let's check all the other details like here on the parameters let's check the vtech here you can adjust the vtech point here and then wait wait sorry 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 that's going to be the vtech section there and of course on the high cam it will be where is it over there so you you know you can reference that even on chrome and hds it's gonna be you know the same area and same you know same way so now here let's go back to the parameters let's check here's the vtech you can adjust the vtech there and idle here and you can check the target idle and the IACV control here just like the other ones all right and here the rev limit yes and the cool thing here is each gear you can have a different rev limit so that's pretty cool so on data s300 is very very user user friendly and here on the fueling on the injectors and the good thing with it it has a preset battery offset you can check where is it here like for example if you have rdx 410 cc injectors you can choose that it's going to be close enough and that's going to help you have an easier time tuning so yep let's go back here onto the tables and all this is the map here this is the this section here is the idle all right yep so we gotta work on that now let's go back to chrome here okay so we have a dc in z6 so, so open it again where is it? It's over there. All right. So now talking about the importance of idle, you know, for you to get started, of course, you know, you gotta start the car and it has to idle or hold good idle. So the fueling is pretty much, you know, as it is, I mean, not really as it is, but it's a give and take. It's like you have to you have a wide band to be able to adjust it properly and have a target air fuel. Here, this is the idle area. So if you adjust the idle air fuel, it's gonna be there. Here's on the ignition, it's over there. So here's the one thing. I I like actually having this on the 16, the 1000 RPM, cause you know, most of the time we idle between 900 to 1000. So I make sure that's all 16 on the timing. Cause this area here, that's where you usually idle. 
but of course that's from 900 to 1000 sometimes you go over like over 1000 like 1050 1100 that's why i adjust also this i put it to 60 to 16 sorry sorry so this way you can idle on this section it's going to be on 16 still and this area this column here is when you turn on the ac the load changes differently or goes to the different load and this section is where you you start tuning it but of course the reason why i notice sometimes if they overfill the freon or the ac compressor is like you know almost giving out is it reaches the fifth column so naturally the fifth column i have to make it 16. so now here again sorry with hds much the same we get to look for the base map that's good for our engine like a d16 z6 where is it there you go all right okay here much the same let's go to the low cam ignition this is the fuel low cam fuel high cam ignition and low cam ignition so this is the idle section here all right so we get this to 16. And later on we're gonna show you a real time with the hot data and so you can see it so we get that 16 even this part here as, as i mentioned earlier well, this section here is used on the ac but we're gonna put this down to 16 so it's all all the same so you get idle up to 1000 it's still 16 on the timing yep and even a little over that and you know I, I usually do that this way even if you go a little bit over 1000 it's still idling properly on the proper timing now going to home data much the same thing as you notice the whole approach or the you know the step by step or the system is really really similar so once you get to tune chrome or hds it's gonna be much the same with home data here's open up the calibration okay here it is you get that the good thing with home data is the, there's a plus or minus value there so it's a lot easier but you know it's you when you get used to it with different platforms it's okay we get this to 16 even this one yep this part here is on ac so we get that to 16 too and this one yeah a little over 1000 i like to do that just so that you know even if you're idling over 1050 rpm you're still at the proper timing so you'll be idling there so then you idle over 1000 so it's going to hit that area there so you gotta so i like to do that 16 and this is the ac section or the load of course when the compressor is a little heavier it's going to be on this side here a little bit further on the fifth column so this bottom area here we're gonna get it all to 16 so it's all you know uniform so when you get to synchronize the distributor like here this engine we're tuning the d16 autocross engine yep let's start it let me show you guys all right here i start and we turn on the data logging soon after all right there okay now let's click the data logging wait hold on yep there okay oh sorry 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 data logging let's go back to the table yeah but as you see it's idling right there let's double check if it's data logging yes see like i said earlier it's on that column there that's highlighted it's idling between 1000 to 1250 because it's a little over 1000 so the importance of synchronizing the distributed that timing so now let's check this it says 16 right so i have my colleague check the distributor timing with the timing light i'm sorry i was trying to have him show you guys how to check it with the pulley but it seems to not catch it with my phone my bad sorry about that but yes get it to timing like that holy crap look it's 30 but you see and on the hot data it's still 16 so it's not synchronized so we gotta check that because it matters look because the fueling injector has a phasing or timing 
if you can see here on Handata. So if your distributor is off key or not timed well accordingly, it's it's spewing injectors differently than the ignition. And it actually matters. Let me show you. Let's let have my colleague get the distributed tank popped off. So I was gonna set it to 16. Let's get into 16 there. 16.9. Okay, close enough. So it's almost 17. So that's still close. Just one degree. But ideally, you gotta have to make it to get it to 16. And here, let me show you. The air fuel went to 14.5 now. 14 to 15. Earlier, I didn't get to show it in the video. It was idling at 17 to 18 air fuel. So if you're tuning that, you get it to 14 to 15. That means you have to add fuel, right? And that's probably why I've seen cars locally a lot actually that's been ECU tuned but it's like dumping fuel it's like it consumes seven to five uh, seven to seven point five kilometers to a liter that's really bad that's like that's not a V8 that's that's like a V8 it's crazy right probably because of this so that's how important having your engine mechanically sound or you know in top shape and mechanically tuned properly so when you tune via, via ecu everything works properly so depending on how this video goes we might do a second one that's gonna be more focused on driving and street tuning but hopefully this is a good help for you guys of course you know it on the member section we will be making an even more extensive video like this so for now, this is all we got. But yes, hopefully, if you guys like this, you gotta share it. Yes, and of course, with this next one, you can always gotta click it over here.